Hello. Um, is everyone doing fine? OK, a little low on energy. Next up, I'm moderating a great panel. I'm going to introduce them. Please walk up, uh, Maria and Callum. So as they walk up, I want to set some um, context uh, on inclusive innovation. I think some of you saw a panel in the morning where there were African-American panelists talking about minorities in startup. Um, there were folks with kind of special needs or people who are mentoring special needs kids. So that's kind of the broader uh, conversation we like to have here in I-Valley. That's one of our mission around inclusive innovation. That means kind of broadening the appeal, access of the startup and innovation economy to a broad segment of population. And, and this is part of that discussion. So here I have, and I'll let them introduce, I think some of you know Maria, obviously, she's been emceeing today. Uh, but maybe start with Callum first. Um, do you want to just introduce yourself, Callum, what you do and your background? Yeah, and first, thanks for having me today, Patty. I really appreciate it. Um, not a lot of opportunity for us to get out there and kind of tell our story. But so uh, as the screen says, my name's Caleb Belton. I'm a, a former Marine Raider and, and Special Operations Team Commander. And now I work for Figure Technologies, which is a financial tech and blockchain company uh, in San Francisco. If you were here earlier in the morning, my colleague Zev uh, gave a good speech on, on, um, on provenance blockchain. So I often tell people about my background that I was a Marine Raider, and they look at me with blank stares like, what does that actually mean? So I think we have a video, right, to kind of give a little bit of a, a background of what I, some of my background. Competency drives the various aspects of brotherhood. We all want to be good. We all want to be better than, than we were the week before. We've kind of opened a new door for Marines to, to enter into. It's an exciting and, and adventurous time. If, any, if that motivates anybody to go enlist, I still know a lot of people in the military, so just let me know and I'll give you their number. But <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, how many of you met a Marine before in your life? This is my first time. Oh, well, several people have. That's great. So great. Thank you for your service, Callum. And we'll um, have more conversations. Maria, I know everybody knows you, but say maybe people were not here in the morning when we introduced you. Want to talk a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so first of all, how am I supposed to follow that video? <laughs> that was pretty, pretty darn amazing. So my name is Maria Korleva. I competed in the last two Summer Olympics in synchronized swimming. Fun fact, it is now officially called artistic swimming. So in the next Olympics, it, there, will be n there will no longer be synchronized swimming. Um, I am originally from Russia. I've lived in the Bay Area since I was nine. Um, now I work at Visa and kind of transitioned from being an elite athlete to the business space and obviously really excited to be here. I also have a video and it's a little bit, not quite as action packed as, as the previous one, but it has a little, a little talking, a little synchro, so kind of to give you a little background on what I've done. I'm really excited for Rio. This will be my second Olympics. I have a new partner this time, and it's been really great working with Anita. Maria, my duet partner, who's experienced one coming off of the London 2012 Games, really motivates me every day. When things get hard, she just reminds me to keep pushing and to keep fighting and to keep myself motivated. We train six days a week, anywhere from six to 10 hours a day. Synchronized swimming involves so many other skills. So we do not just the synchro training, but we do strength and weights, ballet and gymnastics and Pilates, all sorts of stuff involved to make us perform better in the water. Ideally, you know, it'd be nice to improve our ranking from, from London and 
Anita and I have been improving every time that we've competed together and hopefully we can just kind of keep going and just improve every day. Wow. So great. Um, maybe continuing on the context, right, on diversity. I know this is different type of diversity, but Maria, maybe you first kind of talk about how some of your Olympic backgrounds helping you in your current job at Visa in financial services. And maybe, um, Calum, you continue on that from a figure perspective. Yeah, I think, I mean, I feel like this is this is a conversation that's being talked about more and more, which is really good to see. But I think there's so many parallels between obviously you know military service as well as as being an elite athlete. Lots of parallels between that and working in the business space. Um, as an elite athlete, you spend so many hours being dedicated to your sport, and you would think that a lot of companies would you know be valuing you know, a lot of those skills that, that athletes can bring to the table. But in my experience, it was actually a lot more difficult to transition to the business world than I thought it would be. So the fact that I'm now at Visa at a company that does value the things that Olympians and elite athletes can bring to their company is, is really amazing. I think, you know, just off the top of my head, obviously, hard work, dedication, um, commitment, teamwork, those are all the skills that I learn in the pool. I had to exemplify for 19 years of my life. But now, in the business world, no, I'm no longer in a pool. I am now at a desk for eight to 10 hours a day. But those same skills are gonna help me succeed in, in the business space. I'm able to pick up concepts more quickly. I, had, I knew nothing about the payment space when I, you know, when I started at Visa. I still don't feel like I know a ton about the payment space, but having that athletic background has really allowed me to just jump in head first and, you know, hopefully be able to succeed. So I'm sure, Caleb, you have a similar experience. Yeah, I, I think you really, you, you hit it spot on. It's, it's kind of a shame that more companies don't take a chance. I, I say take a chance. It's really not taking a chance on us, it, 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 but like really giving an opportunity to, to uh, in Maria's case, a professional athlete, or in my case, a, a former uh, Marine uh, Special Operations officer, the things that we do or that we've seen in our and that and the experiences that we've had that have really shaped our view on things is is a it's a quality that you don't get from traditional hires, um, and, and especially you know going into a startup world where I am now, it's almost a perfect fit coming from running a, a special operations team where my mission was generally very limited in, in direction. It was, here's the problem set, here's the country you're going to, here's your 14-man team, like, go figure it out and produce some results. And so that's not that different from what I do now with Figure. I, I work on our people and business operations side, so one of the first things that I did was establish an office in Reno for our customer support center. And there was, we had no infrastructure there, we had nothing, it was me and actually another special operations guy who came in shortly before me. Uh, we just went there, we built it ourselves, not literally built it, but we built the office out ourselves and it was just some of those skills that we learned. And, and when you come in, when you come across like an obstacle, the thought isn't, oh, now what do we do? It's, okay, cool, let's figure this problem out and then get on to the next one. And I think that's something that a lot of companies really could use and it's, it's a, a talent that a lot of people don't necessarily have, but the people coming from our community do. Yeah, no, very true. I work with a lot of startups that totally relate. I mean, every day is a new problem, and, and just go from that to react to the problem at hand. So very, very true. So I hope startups um, in the audience and even big companies are hearing that, right? It's always great to hire veteran, not just because it's a good thing, or hire Olympians or elite athletes because it's a good thing, but they bring in valuable skills to the table that maybe you won't get from the market. Well, and I think I just I, I, I want to add something really quick. I think I think the, the big key point here is that when I was entering the workplace, I had barely anything on my resume, like actual real work experience. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter if I haven't physically done some of these things. I can learn everything. And so can somebody who is in the military. That's what we're trained to do. We're trained to you know, adapt quickly, to pick things up quickly. So whatever sphere I end up going into, I know that I'll be able to handle it. And I think that's that's an important 
thing that companies a lot of times don't see if they don't see those you know specific line items of oh you know, you had this internship and this internship they, if you don't have that hands-on experience they think that you're not going to be a, valu a valuable asset to the company which i think is a big misconception yeah. and i want to get to that how we can change that right how i, I think figure maybe we talk about that honor foundation does that so how we can change that but i want to both of you talked about your respective companies and how they are promoting and encouraging so i want to give you an opportunity to talk about that and whoever wants to go first, both your respective companies. Yeah, so I think early on from in figures, um, you know, when they started in January of 2018, one of their first hires was a former colleague of mine in the military. We worked closely together there, and now we work closely together here. He was a special operations officer just like myself. They brought him on really early uh, through the Honor Foundation, which is a great uh, organization that I'll, I can talk about a little bit later. Um, but they needed somebody who knew how to build and he knew how to build. And so they brought him on and he built out and then brought me on shortly after. We, we together built out the, you know, the HR infrastructure, the business operation infrastructure, and figure realized pretty quickly that there was a real value there uh, in, in what we brought to the table and, as opposed to just bringing on somebody who had a, a 20 year background in, in HR or people operations. And so from there, we've then really made a targeted effort to bring on more and more and we've actually hired uh, yesterday, we, we finally we signed uh, another um, Marine Raider, so that brings us up to six now total, in addition to some other veterans as well throughout the company, because we've identified positions that these skill sets are really, really beneficial to have in, and then we've said, okay, let's go find the right person for that and you know tap into our network of, of veterans and, and active duty military and see if they, if they fit the bill, and we've had some great success with it. Everyone so far who's come in has really provided a ton of value, so. Great. Maria, talk about the visa rotation program for Olympia. Yeah, so surprisingly, Visa is the only Olympic sponsor. So they're they're a, a top sponsor. So they sponsor the entire Olympic mo Olympic and Paralympic movements. But they're and they're also a Team USA sponsor. And very surprisingly to me, they're the only Olympic sponsor who has a program specifically for retired Olympic athletes. I'm always it's like so shocking to me is that these these big companies who support the Olympic movement financially don't take advantage of the human capital that they have access to, which is all, you know all of these Olympians. So Visa started this program three years ago, and it's kind of looped in with their new grad program. So it's a two-year rotation program. We just started in August, and we rotate through two to four different teams at Visa. And then after the two years, well, it's one to two years, you can roll off the program after two rotations if you want, or you can do three or you can do four. And then you can join the team that you, you know, that you enjoyed the most. And I mean, I think it's really great because you get to try out different teams. I think when you're kind of first starting out in your career, sometimes you're not exactly sure what you want to do. So to be, be able to have a chance to, to try different things is really great. Something we're definitely struggling with a little bit is differentiating ourselves from the new grads. So these are kids who are, you know, 21, 22 years old who have a bunch of things on their resume. And here we are who have all these athletic experiences, maybe not so much professional experience, but we still, you know, we want to just be able to differentiate ourselves from from the new grads. Um, my, my hope is that in the future, more companies and more Olympic sponsors especially will be able to have, you know, not, you don't even need to have an, uh, a specific program for Olympians or even, you know, former military personnel, but just to give us a chance, just to, you know, get us in the mix and look at us as elite athletes, don't look at us as regular applicants. So it's been great so far. Okay. Yeah, now, and if I can add one more thing there too, because I think a lot of big companies when they they say that I've got the, we've got this diversity and inclusion program, and they lump in veterans and and you know if they have a special uh, program for athletes, they lump that all into one diversity and inclusion program, and that's not really the right way to do things, right? So there's I don't think that there should be one set category like we have made all these diversity hires and here's the veterans. Like if you're hiring veterans just because you want to bump your numbers up, you're hiring them for the wrong reason. You should be hiring them because the value that they provide to the company. And that's one thing that through that the Honor Foundation really preaches is that like don't go to a company just because they've hired a lot of vets. That doesn't necessarily mean that they value what you bring to the table. Like you need to interview with that company and you're interviewing them to make sure that they're really gonna get they're gonna keep you interested, keep you engaged and get the most out of you that they can. Okay. No, that's great. And and um 
it uh, we have to have more conversations around that, right? How how best to do that? I agree with the sentiment you pose there, right? That it's not it should be done for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So so I want to talk about that, but I want to involve the audience too. We have a few more minutes. So if there are any questions, just kind of raise your hand or. Um, yeah, I, I have a couple of other uh, things to talk about too. Um, in terms, oh, there's someone. Okay, go ahead. Is that it? There it goes. Okay. Do you think um, that companies or the people that are hiring certain places not just don't understand or there it's such a few number of people that have been in the military or in been an elite athlete do you think that's part of the challenge is that you know management in certain places particularly a smaller company there's 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 no experience they have no point of reference as to what your your what you've done and why that can add so much to a company so yeah i i think you're right on that is that it's not common that they see people with a resume like ours. And, and part of it is on us for not, it's a problem across the military of being able to translate what we've done in the service and how that can have an impact on a company that you're interviewing for. It, it's, it's an issue that like the transition, the natural transition out of the military doesn't really cover it very well. They tell you how to write a resume from a stand or from a um, structure standpoint, but they don't really tell you how to elaborate on what you what you have done and how that can really help a company. So there are there are um, organizations that are now popping up to really help that help us as we transition out to show our value because a lot of people you know in a hiring department they maybe look at a resume for thirty seconds and if you haven't caught them by then it's you know it's going in the in the garbage pile. So uh, you got to really be able to to display that through writing as well uh, if you can't get in for an in person interview. Well, and I think I think one of the I think just awareness and, and education is absolutely one of the challenges. In my experience, though, when I was interviewing for for some of these jobs right after the Olympics, they you know people would say, "Oh my gosh, you know you have such an amazing experience. I'm sure you would be such a great hire." But you know, we ended up going with somebody who has one or two years more experience. So it's like they recognize that you do have skills that are valuable to them, but it's almost like they don't have they don't have proof or like use cases of, oh, look at this company, they've hired all these Olympians and look at how well they're doing. So I think for a program like Visas, again, my goal is to be able to go to a company and say, look, We've hired all these Olympians. Look at this amazing feedback that all of those people's managers have. There's been zero negative feedback from any of these athletes that we've hired. Now you can do the same. I think when, when there's not that data to kind of go off of, people recognize that we have all these great skills, but to actually take that chance on us, they won't take that leap. Because to them, it's a risk, you know? So um, kind of going a little different um, um, topic uh, related. Um, the Olympics and, and the military is very intense. So startup, you said it is intense, especially working with startup compared to, say, Visa. But still, the, maybe you need some outlets, other hobbies. So how, I, I know, Maria, you blog and talk about nutrition and coach. So maybe both of you talk about what do you do outside of the work to kind of keep up with that intensity because you've had a lot of intense time. Yeah, yeah I definitely, and I do see my wife a lot more now, which is great because <laughs> going back to back deployments, gets, it, it wears on you. Uh, and, you know, people, as I went into the startup world, were like, uh, oh, you, you wanted to go to a startup. That's not really going to be that much of a change. But it, I, I honestly, it has been a nice welcome surprise that I have a little bit more work-life balance and uh, be able to to do things that I like, which one of the things actually that Figure has been great about uh, is really uh, in, encouraging us to kind of do the things that we're passionate about because they understand that what the work we're doing at Figure might not be the most exciting compared to what we've done in the past. So they've actually been really supportive of, I, I, I'm part of a nonprofit called Resilience Racing. So I've been doing auto racing for years growing up uh, and mo and recently just uh, competed in a 12-hour in a, um, uh, endurance race at Indy Motor Speedway with them. It's f the, the idea behind Resilience Racing is that it is a... Um, it's an all-disabled military team trying to compete on, an, on a level playing field with 
uh, able-bodied driver. So wow. using hand controls and and uh, and adaptive steering wheels to be able to to compete on a level playing field. So we do have a video. I don't know if we have time for it. It's, it's yeah, we do. We probably do. Can we uh, tee up the video, please? That sounds very exciting. Hi, my name's Caleb Belden. I'm uh, Nick Lambert. I work for Figure Technologies. Video is not playing. Figure Technologies. And a driver for Resilience Racing. Okay. And fortunate enough to be a driver for Resilience Racing. Resilience Racing is an amateur motorsports team. Hi, my name's Caleb Belden. I'm Nick Lambert. I work for Figure Technologies. I work for... Figure Technologies. I work for... Hi, my name's Caleb Belden. I'm Ron Hi, my name's Caleb Belden. I'm Ron Nickman. I work for Figure Technologies. I work for Figure Technologies. And I drive for Resilience Racing. And a driver for Resilience Racing. And fortunate enough to be a driver for Resilience Racing. Resilience Racing is an amateur motorsports team formed around five remarkable veterans who are passionate about racing and united by the mission to advance adaptive sports into the world of amateur auto racing. Racing provides a unique platform for servicemen and women to compete, overcome, win, and share with the world their incredible stories of fortitude and resilience. Motorsports should be the great equalizer for the pair disabled, and Resilience Racing seeks to blaze new paths through its racing programs and innovations in accessibility, affordability, and performance. Uh, I think Figure is so interested in supporting and, and sponsoring Resilience Racing uh, for a number of reasons. In the little over a year that they've been around, we've hired a, a significant amount of, amount of veterans into our company, myself included. They've really seen the value in, in hiring veterans and what they can actually bring to the table. But they believe in our innate abilities and our ability to really contribute and, and help the company uh, achieve its goals. Our success in the racetrack will further open doors for all aspiring disabled drivers. Please follow us on our journey to take this team from zero to endurance racers in just a few months and achieve victories for both adaptive sports and the world of amateur racing. That's a great video, and it's great that your employers go ahead. You yeah, want to say something? Saying, they've been they've been amazing with that, and and they really like as soon as I came to our marketing department, I was like, hey, we're doing this. Is there any you know like is there any opportunity for them to promote resilience racing? They were like, oh yeah, absolutely. They like hopped on right right away, and they threw a lot of effort at it, and, and it's been great. And so, um, you know, we've got a few actually. So uh, I don't know if anybody knows uh, Kirsty Ennis, who is she was. Um, the SB award winner for the Pat Tillman um, award for for leadership, I think it is. Um, she's one of our drivers as well, and and nice. uh, and so really, it's just been such a great thing for them to be able to support something that I'm really passionate about. And and Nate Lampert, who was also on there, is another employee figure, and we served together in the military too. So that's awesome. We could go on for long, but I see that we're on the red mark. But but I just wanted to just summarize or do a bottom line, right? So it's great to hire veterans, as we heard in the brief time that we had. It's great to hire Olympians and elite athletes for their strengths, not just because they make up some number to use Callum's term. So I hope that startups and your employers and you look into that um, in a more active way. Thank you both. Let's give a big hand.